Stem cells represent medical hope for many, but for others, the research raises moral questions. Just a few minutes from now, President Obama signs an order overturning Bush administration policies on embryonic stem cell research. The presidential order will do away with limits on using federal money for embryonic stem cell research. We're about nine minutes away from the scheduled announcement. Many conservatives oppose the move because it means the destruction of human embryos. Supporters say the research could lead to treatments or cures for a wide range of diseases and conditions. We will have live coverage of the president's announcement on stem cells. It is set for, again, 1145 Eastern Time, about eight minutes from right now. The president's decision on stem cells, while not unexpected, reopens a moral can of worms. Let's talk about that. Professor Arthur Kaplan chairs the Department of Medical Ethics at the University of Pennsylvania. And Elizabeth Cohen is our senior medical correspondent for CNN. Uh, Professor, let me start with you. And, and, and I'm going to throw you a, a big hardball right out of the gate here. What is the moral status of the human embryo? Are we talking about life or are we talking potential life? <laughs> I think a lot of people would try to punt that question, but I'll give you an answer. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I think that it is potential life. You know, it is true that every life begins at conception, but it isn't true that every conception begins a life. A lot of embryos are miswired. Even uh, in birds and bees sexual relations, a huge number of embryos fail. So I think it's kind of a, a long distance between having an embryo in a dish and a baby and I don't think we can equate, and I don't think most Americans would, an adult human being right. with an embryo. Okay, and Professor, let's, so let's broaden it a little bit. Uh, are there ethical arguments to be made here apart from the status of the embryo? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to surprise you a little bit and say, not really. I mm. think this really is a stocking horse fight about wow. abortion, about embryos. There are some issues that come up about what's the best alternative to pursue adult stem cell fetal, uh, induced, pluripotent, there are all kinds of ways mm -hmm. to get stem cells. But those are basically science questions. And even though we hear a lot right now about uh, people saying, well, there are other ways to go, they're really, those other ways to go arguments are coming from people with religious or moral objections to embryo destruction. Scientific community is absolutely in agreement that you've got to pursue all strategies at this point because it's early days and we really don't know what's going to deliver in terms of cures. Mm, Elizabeth Cohen has a question for you. All right, here's my question for you. I was speaking to a woman who is an opponent of embryonic stem cell research, and she said, look, I consider embryos sitting in a fertility clinic human beings, and I think it's unethical, mm. it's murder, to destroy them, and I don't want my taxpayer money going to that destruction. What mm -hmm. would you say to her? Well, I'd say this. The embryos that are left behind, and remember, Elizabeth, there are probably 600,000 in the U.S. alone left behind by couples who don't want them anymore, trying to have babies, but they did, or they gave up because they couldn't afford it, or they got divorced, or they died. Those embryos' fates are sealed. They will be destroyed. Better to have something good happen, research that might benefit people in wheelchairs or help kids with juvenile diabetes, than simply to have them destroyed at the clinics. We're not going to see any other fate for those embryos other than they're going to be destroyed. Now, I think some folks would disagree with you and would say, well, Art, you could take those embryos and give them to a family that does want them. There are families that would love to adopt those embryos and put them into the wife's womb and grow them into a child. You know, I would agree with that. Last year in the United States, we had 70, 70 embryo adoptions. If we really pushed, we might get a couple dozen more. 600,000 embryos, roughly 100 people adopting an embryo each year, that's not the answer. I know that some people wish that we could find parents to take 600,000 embryos on. We're not going to do that. The, most of these wow. embryos are too old. They're going to wind up being destroyed, I say, and I think President Obama agrees, let's use them in research if we're going to have to destroy them anyway. Well, Professor, uh, another question here. You know that, uh, you know, the line, money is the root of all evil. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, just, I'm, I'm just curious here. Uh, is there money to be made in this research? We can, we can talk about the applications here for uh, treating diseases all day, but I'm just so, sort of curious here. We know that California, New Jersey, Connecticut, mm -hmm. and Illinois and other states are already setting aside money for this kind of research. Is there money to be made here? Is there market here? Big money. Uh, other countries are absolutely pushing as fast as they can in embryonic stem cell research to get ahead of us. China, India, Britain, Sweden, Israel, even Iran. So those countries are hoping that they can come up with some cures before we get there, patent them, sell them back to us. 
interesting question. If another country got cures from embryonic stem cell research, would the opponents actually prohibit them from being imported in here? I doubt that very much. But the answer to your question, there is money. There is a business out oh. there, big opportunities. If you can get cures for Parkinsonism, for uh, spinal cord injury, uh, for juvenile diabetes, you would make a pretty penny. And Professor, let me, let me see here. I think we have folks starting to gather in the East Room of the White House. Do we have a picture of that? Okay, great. We've got pictures now. Great. Uh, folks gathering for this announcement. It's scheduled to begin in just a couple of minutes here. Scheduled for 1145, maybe a touch later than that. Uh, Professor Elizabeth Cohen has our final question for you. Okay, here's a question for you, Art. For the past eight years or so, some people would say that research on embryonic stem cells in the U.S. has really been hampered because mm -hmm. the funding, the federal funding has been so limited. Have other countries gotten ahead of the United States on this research? A Little bit. There is some important work going on in England. Uh, we're not clear what the Chinese are doing. They don't say much uh, and talk much about it. I'd say this. At the end of the day, the biggest engine driving research in the world is the National Institutes of Health. We just spend a lot of money there on basic research. Private companies don't spend that kind of money. Even foreign countries don't really spend that kind of money. So when the NIH puts money into embryonic stem cell research, as they will after Obama makes this announcement, I think it's still going to allow us to catch up. I think it's still going to uh, allow the United States to take the lead in this area. Professor Kaplan, that was terrific. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you. And Elizabeth, thank you, as always. Thank you. Wow, you, you made me look really smart here. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and any minute now, let's see that live picture again. Let's take it full. Let's squeeze it, whatever you want to do here. We're expecting President Obama to sign an order reversing the Bush policy on stem cell research. Live coverage as it happens. And part of that order aims to separate politics and science. How does the president plan to do that?